Nashville Daily Podcast. I am your co-host, Stuart Deming, and today's episode is brought to you by ExploreTours.com. If you want to learn about the city of Nashville in style, come take a walking tour with us. This is a two-hour long tour in the downtown Nashville area. It starts at the Tennessee State Capitol and goes all the way to Bridgestone Arena. We see a lot of things and learn a lot of history. Uh, you can use the code ND10 at the Nashville History Walking Tour over at ExploreTours.com to learn about Nashville. Head to ExploreTours.com. Today, we are talking about the missing interstate. And you may be wondering where that is because uh, the plan for it in 1975. In 1975. It's, it's, I've been wondering because it's missing. It's missing. I've been missing it. <laughs> missing driving on it. Uh, the plan in 1975 was to have another interstate surrounding Nashville. Not really an interstate, a byway, a state highway, because it wouldn't be classified as an interstate because interstate's federal. Okay. The, I, the I current part of it is an interstate. But it, it but it's state operated and ran. But it's I. It is I. Okay. That interstate that we're going to be talking about. Yeah. Okay. So fun. Okay. So then we're also talking about a new pizza restaurant opening in downtown Nashville. I'm actually excited about this one. And we have some news. Land was sold in Midtown where the old Beeman site was. So we're going to be talking about some fun things. Uh, let's get into this Interstate 840, if you didn't know what we were talking about. Is this a cue for me to start? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we were, uh, uh, Chris Brown at Blessed Day Coffee uh, sent us a little PDF yesterday. Uh, you can use that discount code to take uh, 20% off of his coffee over at blessedaycoffee.com. Uh, but Chris sent us over this, uh, this let me, PDF, let me open the PDF, this, this PDF of interstate 40 mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah, interstate 840. And, um, you, Stuart and I have both been here since 2013. Uh, so one thing that, uh, locals have an advantage of being here is seeing and being uh, experiencing the construction of things like 840. Oh, even 40. I, I, I know I know people that were here for 40 when yeah. 40 was built. So, uh, you know, those are those are some of the things that aren't talked about a lot um, as far as the history. It's not as exciting as some of the other history of Nashville. And so we don't get to dive into these topics very often. Um, it, but when, uh, when Chris sent us that, we're like, okay, let's just dive into the history of Interstate 840. Um, and lo and behold, uh, what we discover, and we had heard about this, we just haven't put the, the time to actually look into this. Um, we had heard that 840 was planned to essentially surround uh, the entire Nashville area almost, in a big almost, circle. Almost the entire county of yeah. Jefferson County. Yeah, so in, in a big circle... Um, and, uh, but obviously half of that is not there since interstate 840 only runs, uh, nor or south of 40 in a big semicircle. So we're going to look at the history of this and, and what happened and how it got into development real quick. And Stuart, you said you have this, this PDF. Yeah, so this is the up. PDF that Chris sent me and, uh, it gets, it just goes into the thing. It says we're placing this project on indefinite hold. <laughs> Imagine... <laughs> What we're about to see, imagine the economic drivers if 840 also went north, like Springfield, White House, all of these towns right. that could be thriving. Some of them are. Gallatin's thriving. Hendersonville is thriving. Right. Uh, they all have their little offshoots now mm -hmm. of how to get there instead of using 840. They, mm -hmm. have, they have all these like little Highway different 109 and, byways. Yeah. And, and all of these things. But like, if you look at the economic success... Of, of Murfreesboro, of Nolansville, of Franklin, all of these little small towns uh, surrounding 840. And then you have 840 of Saturn Parkway. Like, you mean Old Hickory Boulevard's not enough? It's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. Okay, so it goes into details on why they're putting this on hold. Um, the notion for a major roadway encircling the Nashville metropolitan area goes back to at least the mid-1970s. One of the recommendations included... In the 1975 to 1999 Tennessee Highway System Plan issued in 1975 was the Outer Beltway around Nashville. Okay, so in 18, 1986, they passed a state tax to be able to build this. Yep. Okay, so it basically, I, I think construction started on it in 1991. 
and it's been open since around that time. So, yeah, so this is the map of the northern loop of the supposed 840. Yep. So it would have uh, part of Interstate 40 was actually uh, the plan to be a part of this in the Lebanon area. 840, you would get on to 40 and then uh, get back off on 840 South or uh, to, to hit that South Loop. But, yeah, you can see exactly where this is going up. Um, it's intersecting with Highway 109 and all of the other major corridors that are going north and out of our city, in and out of our city, which would have been Highway 65, uh -huh. uh, Interstate 24. And it goes through Dixon. It goes through these little small towns like Springfield and White House. And imagine the economic success. I think this is still a possibility. It's going to be a lot harder now to implement something like this because of all the construction in Gallatin. Yeah, the... Um it would be very interesting to see if the interest would be still there for something like this. Um, one of the the things that we've heard about Briley, right, when Briley was constructed, is it was supposed to be mainly for truck traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, the designation with 840 was also supposed to be so more traffic locally could use all the local roads and things that needed to go from 40 to 40 uh, would just take 840 and bypass the local national traffic, right? Those are the intentions. Now, what's the reality? Um, trucks don't take Briley. Mm -hmm. um, trucks don't take 840 as much as they take 40. I would say uh, there's a lot of truckers on 840, though. There are. I'm not yes. saying there are not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying there are more that go straight through downtown. Mm -hmm. um, right now, and that's par partially because yeah. of the Travel of America was downtown. Yeah. And that thing is that's now That's gone. not there. So you could possibly incentivize truckers mm -hmm. by putting maybe some major stops along 840 uh, that are, that are trucker-friendly. That would be really cool to see if that would be a reason why truckers would take 840. Um, but we're, we're seeing what is the reality and reality is people are not using these things as intended. And so, um, it, it is very interesting to see things are built for one use or one potential use, and then they end up not being used in, I, in that way. And, and part of it is the GPS is recommending, Hey, you just, you straight go 40. Yeah. So this, this is interesting and you're going to find this interesting. <laughs> So construction on 840 started in 1991, finished in 2012. Almost, sounds, almost 21 years. That, that sounds about right from what I've seen from interstate work. Yeah. Uh, the highway was, was originally planned as an interstate highway, but was constructed entirely with state funds and initially designed as a state route for this reason. In 2015, the Federal Highway Administration and the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials approved TDOT's request to redesignate uh, State Route 840 as I-840. Yeah, so it, it first... Let me, actually, and then it, let me show this map. It got denied as an interstate in 92 mm -hmm. first. So let me show this map. This is the map of... Let me see if I can zoom in on this, make it a little bit better. Okay, so this is the map. So there's this southern route. That red, that red solid line is the solid route. <laughs> that one exists. Of 840. The dotted red line is the northern route. This loop would have been amazing. And this loop would have been compared to the, the some of the loops in Houston, Texas. Yeah, and, and I think you're exactly right. The the opportunity for uh, towns like Springfield, like Bon Aqua, mm -hmm. like um, uh, even the everything that's in between Clarksville and Dixon. Cumberland tons. Furnace. Have you ever heard of that town? <laughs> I have, actually. Okay. I've Most people haven't. Uh, the, all of these small towns that exist between, and you're right, Gallatin would have an outsized impact as well, uh, between uh, uh, Dixon and Clarksville and Gallatin and Lebanon would have a fantastic opportunity um, for just people to visit mm -hmm. for uh, businesses to be successful and, and up and down the, the loop. So near these exits where a lot of people would stop, there's a lot of opportunity for businesses to just kind of ride along the interstate uh, there. Um, and, and it would have made what is now 
an hour drive, hour 15 drive into Nashville from some of these places, especially the Bon Aquas and the Cumberland Furnace, into 35, 40 minutes, yep. um, which is a, a huge factor in which why people may move and, and decide to do commerce there because the drive time is, is cool. cut so in if half. You, if, let's just keep this map up. Um, so if you, if you think about it, where is the most thriving county in the state of Tennessee? It's Rutherford County where Murfreesboro is. Part of the reason for that is because they have 840. Like I would, they, they I would have say 840, they have 24, 24. But yeah. on 840, on the 840 side in Rutherford County and in Wilson County, you have all of those distribution factories. Yeah, and they're massive. Yeah, so people are moving here for those jobs. And then imagine if this happened on the northern side, especially like the northwest of of Davison County. Well, yeah, you're, there's there's. Uh, I'm not saying nothing, but there's compared to what Murfreesboro is between Clarksville and Nashville, there's there's not a whole lot that's happening. And so in part and people will say people will complain. Well, you have you have differences in typography. So yeah. in Murfreesboro, you have a little bit more flat ground. You have that you have the tropical actual climate. Sure. And like Ashland City in that area, it's it's there, there's hills. It's rolling hills. Yeah. And it's yeah. Massive rolling hills. Yeah. So th- there, there is a lot of difference in the land. So I, I understand that. But like the economic factors of having this and part of the reason we wanted to talk about this is Bill Lee uh, over the next few months, especially on July 1st, when the new budget goes in for the state is choice choice lanes with this private uh, private pub, public partnership right where they're going to be building choice lanes throughout Middle Tennessee or all of Tennessee. Yeah, um, it, it is interesting, and I've I've also heard whispers that Briley um, was supposed to have a southern loop to it instead of uh, whatever whatever Thompson Lane is to be a, uh, unofficially it is unofficially a part of Briley, I believe uh, mm-hmm. uh, Harding and Thompson Lane. And everything in between Harding and Bradley on the other side, yeah, they're, they're kind of so unofficially con- it's just so congested. Right, right. Nobody would ever really consider that any kind of uh, parkway or anything like that, um, because they're just they're just regular roads, but they're a part of that Bradley Parkway loop on the south side. Um, but I've, I've heard whispers about that for for Bradley as well. Um, but you're right. The the choice lanes are going to be interesting once we actually see where they are significantly dedicated uh, towards and, you know, how impactful we think they could be after we've seen a little bit more detail in their plan. Uh, I'm sure once they've had the budget uh, approved and they can actually get incredible um, either renderings or more details out in about probably six, six, seven months, maybe a year after that budget is released, uh, that they'll be able to have uh, a lot of detail on that and, and ready to roll on that. Aaron, um, what, what do you think the cost of 840 was? Uh, that's cheating because I already saw it. Oh. It was $280,000. No. That's uh, okay. So no, the, I was the, the, reading. The project took 26 years to complete altogether and cost uh, at the time in 2012 $753 million. What was I looking at? I was looking at something else then. I think this is maybe to get the interstate designation. But probably it was two hundred eighty thousand dollars for twenty six years of construction. That is, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's cheap. <laughs> um, that's very cheap. I was, I was when I read that, I was like, oh, that's uh, that's very cheap. Well, if you count inflation, okay, so you're you're reading at the end. Yeah, it was the redestination of the eight forty, so two hundred thirty thousand right there. Okay, um, but at the if you did if you count it inflation, it would be probably closer to nine hundred fifty million dollars in today's money. Not, not terrible. I'd take it. I think a billion dollar, if it's probably going to be a little bit more than a billion dollars now to do something like that, because land is so expensive compared to what, what this was. Yeah. It would probably be close to a two, $2.5 billion project. It may be a billion dollars just, just to buy the land. Just to buy the land. Yes. Hands down. Especially like, in Gallatin. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, that's going to be very expensive. And so I vote yes. <laughs> on this and i know uh if anyone is listening from the state we should restart this conversation yeah. well it's very interesting the main reason that uh this will just be the last thing i say on the main reason that they didn't build and they stopped was or it was two things one residents were upset they didn't want it interfering with their land and everything going on mm-hmm. there so I they had a, had a big 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 
kind of protests in that area. Number two, uh, they didn't feel like they could justify the amount of they, they didn't think there was going to be enough traffic to justify it. Hmm. Um, and so here we are here in, and here we are. Um, so just goes to show you how much planning ahead could actually be very successful today. Do you vote yay or nay? Um, for this, if I were to vote now on something like that, I would say just specifically for the reason that the area between Dixon and 65 North mm-hmm. uh, could have a faster way into Nashville, I would vote yes. So I wouldn't even mind if it was only cut from there, uh, from 65 North to Dixon so area. Be a- be- because Gallatin, they have they have a quick way into Nashville now, yep. Gallatin and Hendersonville. Um, and Lebanon's, they, they've pretty much got it with with interstate 40 with highway 70 with 109 Mm -hmm. 231 all of those things have kind of taken that place and and 840 and then 840 wouldn't speed it up well and then the nice thing about like highway 109 is lebanon or gallatin is paying for the expansion of it and now like there's parts of it that's three lanes like it's they're, they're taking care of it themselves instead of relying on the state yeah, so I would I would say from Dixon to 65 North, I would say yes to. I'll say yes to the whole thing. <laughs> so you know what else I say yes to is caffeine in the mornings. Not caffeine's in the afternoon because uh keeps me up all night. <laughs> but if you're looking for caffeine, you need to head over to our sponsors, Blessed Day Coffee, and you can use the code XPLR20. That's 20% off of your order at blessedaycoffee.com. Aaron, if you don't mind showing my computer, we have a collaboration roast with them. This is the Tennessee Sunrise Blonde Roast. This is my go-to roast every single morning, and uh, it wakes me up, and it hits the spot, and it gives me caffeine I need to keep my day running. So use that code XPLR20 to take 20% off, and there's free delivery in the Nashville area. So let's get into this pizza restaurant opening in downtown Nashville. Uh, Where this pizza, pizza restaurant is going it was an old coffee shop. And I believe the coffee shop back in the day, like five years ago, was called Dunn Brothers. Correct. So this is, if somebody knows where that is, this is inside the LNC building. Are you going to send Greg? I am sending Greg. Yes. So uh, the history of the LNC building, it is the uh, oldest skyscraper in the city of Nashville. Uh, opened in 1956. And it was the tallest building in the southeast United States for a very long time. And uh, until 19, I think 1964, 1965. So this is the LNC building right here. Greg is on the street. Hey, Greg. He's getting blinded by the sun. And right here was Dunn Brothers. So this was 2000. Okay, 2022. So this little spot right here, this was Dunn Brothers. And this is where the new pizza restaurant is going to be opening. So this pizza restaurant, this is called, uh, this is brought to you by the Fifth Street Group. Uh, And they're bringing an old school Italian neighborhood spot with a modern twist. It's kind of what they call this Ophelia's Pizza and Bar. They are set to open this month, which is pretty exciting, at 401 Church Street, Suite 100. That's what this place is. It's on the ground floor of the LNC Tower. It sits uh, just down the street from the group's first national concept, Church and Union. That's pretty convenient for them to have Church and Union and, and church this union pizza is, bar is, right is thriving. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, in a quote from Patrick uh, Wallen, he's the co-owner of Fifth Street Group. He told the Business Journal that we look for the gap in the marketplace, and in this case, we felt like pizza uh, in a fun but approachable way, but not too upscale. Uh, not too upscale Italian hit the mark, which I, I think they should have gone upscale Italian. I think that would have been a great success. Maybe not in that space particularly. Yeah, maybe a more casual thing really does fit the bill for you know what this this uh, what I hope it is and Stuart you can probably speak more into this I really hope it's more of a a grab and go really good pizza like kind of a New York dollar slice kind of feel uh, it's but it's not, but it's not going to be a dollar slice but it's it's more up, upscale grab and go would would be fantastic that's if they have the displays so these are the right. these are the photos from the Tennessean. Of the restaurant. So the thing oh, I like is this outdoor dining. Interesting. Okay. I, I did that. I, I, I love that. I love um, this concept. I think this is an, is an this amenity. Is this a rendering or is this, no, this, this is, like, is, re- this is there photos. right now? Yeah, okay. they, just, they just took this photo. Oh, I think awesome. this last week. 
Uh, Chad, yeah. like this, I, I I do think Nashville needs more of this too. I yes. I, I 100% especially, love this. Especially especially downtown. Yeah. Um. Okay. So this is the inside. So it feels like an old like mama mom and pop pizza shop. Okay. Like especially cool. up north because like up north. This would be something, and, and you, you've been to Joey's you know, yeah, yeah, before yeah, they were yeah. opening. They had photos of everyone that would come into Joey's. Yeah, so those, like, those it feels like those like old that, yeah. Italian restaurants up north, like those very family centric ones, not fine dining. Um, so let's see. There's no photos of their food. I really like the blend of the outside. I think that is awesome. Uh, there's the little bar top. Go, go to the the two photos back. Yeah. Okay. So that's okay. I like that. I really like that. So it looks like it's going to be holding. I can't tell from the images, but it looks like it may be a hundred top. Yeah, like that's, hundred people. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um. So there's no photos of the food. So go ahead and take my computer off, Aaron. Let me go to their website and see if we could uh, find what okay. what their pizza. So looks they like. have sixty seats, mm-hmm. ten person bar, sixty an outdoor seats. patio, an outdoor patio. So altogether, hundred people. Yep. About yeah. Give that. or take. Uh, um, Six hundred pieces of art handpicked by. Uh, the team Dawn, the leather banquet, uh, almost 600 pieces of art handpicked by the team Dawn, the leather banquet lines, the walls, 300, 3,383 square feet in the restaurant. Uh, some were taken by Wallen's grandfather, a world war two veteran, okay. which is very cool. cool. Uh, other, others are the same pictures that hung in Wallen's first bar concept in 2006, called The Basement in Hoboken, New Jersey. Very cool. So this is a photo of their lasagna. I like it. Ooh, that uh, looks fantastic. I'm excited and I'm hungry. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's go through some of their other photos. So, wh- while you're... Ooh. That so that's like a really Nutella good. dip ice cream thing. Uh, those things are amazing. So they will start dinner service Tuesday to Sunday. Okay. 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, the And the offer after dinner party... And they offer at the after dinner party on Friday and Saturday, 1030 to 3 a.m. This will feature DJ or live music, cocktails, late night food and desserts. Uh, eventually, Ophelia's will be open for lunch as well. Um, the Fifth Street Group's hope Ophelia's will be a place for both tourists and locals, a uh, place to grab a bite before heading to the office, post-work drink or night out. They'll have 40 to 50 employees there. Um they said they're 100% staffed in the kitchen already. I don't know why. I'm still reading. All yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's look at their pizza. So it looks like oh. a Neapolitan pizza. So like Neapolitan. Very, Neapolitan. Uh, so it's very flat crust. Like that. that's what it looks like. Um, is there any other pizza images? Oh, there's their tiramisu. Yep, that looks good. Okay, I'm sold. Do you, do you wish? Cause, so I'll, I'll go back to what I was talking about earlier. If they're not open for lunch, should they do... Grab and go, Italian sandwiches and slices uh, uh, of Italian pizza. sandwiches and and individual slices for lunch. Yes, yeah, hands down. Yep, because like, uh, I mean, imagine if they just had a window mm-hmm. just for lunch. Yep, if they're not going to be open during lunch, just have a window for lunch. That'd be fantastic. Yep, and I especially because we do the walking tours in downtown right there. <laughs> like, there, yeah. there's times I'm always looking for a good slice, and man, yeah. this is closed when I'm looking for a good slice. Yeah. So now let's head over to Midtown. Um, this is a an area of land that we knew was going to sell. I was expecting that. Well, what just happened, Greg? What did you just do? I think we're back. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was expecting the sale price of this land to be way more than what the National Business Journal is talking about. Okay, so let's take a look at the piece of land that you're talking about. I don't know if it's all of it. So this is the Beeman lot. This is now empty. The, the cars that were there are down in South Nashville. It, it may be, because it said uh, they 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 paid this dollar amount that we'll reveal here in a second for two acres at the intersection of McGavick and 14th. So McGavick and 14th. This is McGavick right here. Okay. This is 14th. So they paid for two acres. So, so it could probably be, could just be this just little those, lot. Those parking lots right there. Yeah, just probably the, maybe just this parking lot. Yeah. Because I don't think, I think altogether this is like 10 acres. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely not two. Okay. Um. So you're, you're so talking about McGav- the, the sticker okay. shock for this. Yeah. So McGavick, let me actually show this real quick. Let me turn this around, Greg. Okay. There we are. Oh, goodness, Greg. Okay. So this is Ma- oh, Greg. We're not seeing it on the screen. Oh. All right. So. Well, while we're figuring that out, we got uh, Greg is Greg is lost. Um, 
So this this company, the luxury apartment developer Albion Residential, Albion recently um, opened their residential uh, condos in the Gulch. They have one of the buildings that's blocking the AT and T building view from sixty five from, from coming in uh, mm-hmm. from south to north. Uh, this luxury apartment developer paid thirty one million dollars for these two acres. Uh, and they announced their plans for two, a two tower development on that site. Uh, they announced that previously in September. Yeah, we um, talked about it. Uh, but I think this is this is new news just because of the price tag. purchase of the land, the price tag, and we have some uh, some hard kind of information about these two towers so i have i have i fixed it okay so this street that's here on the left that's mcgavick street and then this is 14th so this lot right here just where here without the building that's probably the two acres that it acquired move your mouse around it i'm not okay okay, yeah so like this yeah where this big lot right here that's probably the two acres i don't think they bought all of this no there's no way okay so yeah. now let's let's show some renderings um, of what this is going to look like. This is dramatically going to change uh, the Nashville skyline in the Midtown area. Yeah, and, and we knew that projects along that Interstate 40 line on the Midtown side would, including um, everything that's that's going on with the former um, uh, dairy factory, yep. with uh, everything from Beeman, with the Subaru dealership, with everything there. We knew that that. The skyline was really going to change in a drastic way. So here are these two towers. So it's here. interesting in this rendering of uh, right here, you still see the beam in sight. So I was correct about those uh, those park that parking lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's the beam in sight, which is really interesting. But here's the two two towers. They look cool. I, I like the architecture of them. So um, this is dubbed Albion Music Row. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's weird. But that's what it that's what it says it's called because the music, business journal. Music Row is still Music Row like is five n- blocks away yeah, from Yeah, not even close to there. Um there's gonna be a twenty nine story building. Okay. I wonder if that's one on the left. That doesn't even look like twenty nine stories. Maybe those are double pane glass, like two stories with one, each two, pane of glass. Three. I don't want to count. Um that's gonna have almost five hundred apartment units in it. Four hundred and fifty eight mm. apartment units. The second one, uh We'll have 392 units. That's going to be 20 stories. Um, it's going to have ground floor, retail, and restaurant space, 25,000 square foot public park with art installations and performance space. The first tower is slated to break ground by the end of the year. Wow. Which is pretty quick. Do you think it's going to be up before the Titan Stadium? Uh, Like finished before the yeah. Titan Stadium? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> uh, I think there's a few more renderings. Yeah, there's a few more renderings. So we can Let me, uh, back out. So we can take a look at those here in just a second. Uh, both towers, according to the business journal, will have micro units at a lower price point. Studios. So okay. So now we know what's what's less than a studio. A micro, micro unit. Unit. Okay. Uh, duplex units and one, two, and three bedroom apartments. Um. Amenities will include gaming centers, indoor and outdoor fitness studios, rooftop pools, and more, according to Albion. Okay, so this is the rendering that we saw. Yep. This is the outdoor park. Is okay. 25,000 square feet? Yeah, I don't know if that's okay. a part of that 25,000 or, or if, that if there's more it. than that. There's that probably more it. than that. Uh, and then they have this terrible photo of Nashville. Okay. And then you have this. Go back to that photo of Nashville. It's from the Sky House. No. Maybe. No, Sky House is there on the left. Okay. Oh, yeah, Sky House. Is, so it's just a drone it's shot. It's just a drone shot. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is the rendering overlooking. So there's the McGavick side, and then this is the fourth. 14th will be right here. Okay. All Interesting. Right. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> That's all she wrote. Okay. All right. Well, let us know what you think about this. Also, let us know about your vote on Interstate 40. If you are... Yay or nay, if you had to design, uh, in addition to increase uh, Nashville's transportation plan, in addition to stuff we've already talked about, would you add an 840? Would you add a part of an 840? Let us know in the comments. Maybe we'll talk about it on the next episode. See you tomorrow.
Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.